there, everybody. Ewan Spence here with another video diary for the Nokia E75. Thank you for all your comments uh, on the first part. Yes, all caught me out. This lovely device does charge over the micro USB port, but I'm still a stickler for the old-fashioned battery charge. What I want to talk to you now is probably the worst thing uh, on the E75, and that is the S60 interface. The hardware on this is gorgeous, uh, and I have to say that this device will serve on the strength of both its delightful candy bar format, even though it's slightly heavier than the fashion phones, but also because of very good, well-balanced QWERTY keyboard sitting underneath. But what we'll gets you is, and we'll get new users especially, is the complexity of S60 and the number of icons. Now, Steve, Rafe and myself have grown up with S60, as it were, uh, and it makes it a lot easier for us to see why things are where things are and why certain design decisions have been made. But there's not a huge amount of us power users. Most people out there will be coming to S60 completely new. They're going to pick up this device and they're going to wonder what it can do. They've read that it can do office applications. They've read that it can do PDFing. They can. They know that it's got a Safari web-based kind of thing like the Apple web browser. It's got email. It can do Gmail. It can do all your PIM applications. It can sync online, take photos and videos. But navigating into those functions is going to be incredibly difficult. Having counted it, there are over 50 icons out of the box on the E75. Some of those are applications. Some of those are folders, and folders don't look like folders. Folders look like icons. So you don't know if it's an application or a folder, or even if it's a shortcut to a different part of an application. There are two ways to get to email on this device. One of them is the built-in messaging application icon, and another one is an icon called email, which brings up four more icons, uh, which leads back to the messaging application. And... Okay, it's great that there's one icon that's made it simpler to use in the same way that there's an icon for Files and Ovi that launches a web widget that will take you to the web browser page uh, and it makes that one operation simpler. There are many of them in, those dev in the E75 as a device, but most of them just add in more icons and more complexity to someone coming to a new user. There are even duplication of applications. There's a notes application and an active notes application, both in the PIM suite. They don't even share the same database. So one note written in one is not accessible in the other. I have no idea why. And it's not as if I'm new to these devices or the Finnish way of thinking. It just seems it's there's too much for a new user. Finally, why do we still need an icon to say an application is open? I thought the whole point of S60 and Symbian was it was multi-threaded, multitasking, and you could keep applications open in the background. Having a great big graphic with a circle that says, hey, guess what, guys? I'm running. Um, it's well, like every icon has this pretty much in mind. Yeah, and then on top of the icons, there are folders. So all that folders running. No, it's an icon. No, it's a folder. And I go in and there's another application that's running inside that folder. No, nope, that's a shortcut, so it's all gone away again. It's not even consistent. When it says the email application is open, the messaging application isn't open, even though they're both open at the same page view, which is my inbox of Gmail. Look, let me illustrate how, how complicated this is. Imagine you are a new user, okay? Now, when you picked up your original Palm Pilot 1000, you had six icons. I actually had to go back and check this. Six. Uh, and I'm going to represent these with playing cards. It's six. Okay, now let's move on to something like the uh, Series 3. So we're going to add a little bit of complexity in here with 8 or 9, uh, maybe up to 5MX. So we're starting to add these in. Now, you know, I've got 13 here, so if you're very British and play bridge, this isn't a problem. Holding 13 cards, I can manage that. Um, people who are used to playing uh, Texas Hold'em, and you're going to be confused once you get past this. Um, which explains why Windows Mobile hasn't taken off. People are used to holding two or three cards. So Windows Mobile, uh, it's got some folders galore. Uh, now, now we're getting to the point of where the 7650 was. And uh, let's add in a couple more. Oh, we've got some smart ideas for S60 version 2. Hey, let's add in N-Gage. Yeah, there we go. Let's, let's add in N-Gage, shall we? Yep, and we've got files in Ovian. All of that in the music applications, and we've got our media. And, oh, hold on. No, we don't want the video editor anymore because we're going to take that out. So we can't edit videos on the device very well anymore. So let's take that one out again. Uh, it's, and, it's, and, and you start to see, how does a new user navigate this? Okay? There are over 50 icons. This is a full playing deck of playing cards. So I've got 52 cards here. Each one of these can represent an application. Yep. 
Simple question. How? How can you take all of those and lay them out? That's the big question. That's one of the core problems of S60 mobile. It doesn't do it very well. But let's be honest. Very few mobile smartphones and UI do that well. That is going to be the big challenge, I think, for Symbian Foundation over the next year. S60 is going to be pulled into the Symbian Foundation OS. There's going to be, it is going to be the basis of a new user interface on the operating system. But let's hope that they can come up with something a little bit easier than this massive spray uh, of applications which you place all over your user interface screen on a new phone. Right then, now I've got that off my chest. Uh, Everything else in the E75 is really nice. Uh, and I'm going to start looking at those applications in depth in the next video diary. So we're probably going to look at things like the web browser, and email client, a couple of the PIM suites and the OV Sync stuff as well. If you have any specific questions, as always, leave your comments. You can either uh, head over to allaboutsymbian.com or if you're there already, comments down there. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to reading uh, all, and all of you ripping apart my arguments there in grateful political style. Uh, but for now, goodbye.